black flame of the Amazon, featuring Harold Noyce, world famous explorer in person. <laughs> Recall the last episode where Mr. Noyce, accompanied by Little Jean and Jim Brady, are going upstream in the big Indian dugout manned by a crew of Indian canoe men. Pedro, with his dugout and crew, are following a half mile behind. At a fork in the jungle river, they approach a settlement, an Indian trading post managed by an Englishman named Bennett Morton. The travelers make plans to go ashore and visit this white trader. But before reaching the Little River loading platform, it is noticed that their arrival has not been announced. In the distance, the jungle drums take up their mournful beat. A stealthy, savage Indian is seen skulking away into the bush. From the river, it appears that all is not well. The station seems deserted. The place is altogether too quiet to be safe. Mr. Noyce is waiting on Pedro's canoe to arrive. Let's shout at Pedro to get his men to lean on the paddles. He isn't hurrying at all. Because he, as yet, doesn't suspect anything wrong. And we won't shout at all. No use giving the alarm. Any shouting we would do might start something that would be hard to stop. But what do you think happened, Mr. Noyce? After all, we aren't sure that anything's wrong yet. That's true, Jean. But everything points to the fact that something is wrong. Very wrong. Mr. Morton isn't down at the dock here to meet us. And that isn't as it ought to be. But that may be... Well, you know, maybe he doesn't know we're here yet. Jimmy, in the jungle here, a white man's approach is known while he is still miles away. Bush telegraph, grapevine, anything you may term it. But our approach is known just the same. Well, you mean that according to the way it ought to be, Mr. Morton ought to have known we were coming long ago? Hours ago, yes. In fact, the last trip I made up here, he came down river by canoe, met me about ten miles from here, and convoyed me up. A visit from a white man happens at long intervals. A trading post on this river is a lonely place. Well, but supposing Mr. Morton is maybe, well, out in the jungle someplace, maybe looking after his rubber trees or something. In that case... Someone would have gone and advised him of our approach. He'd have dropped everything and hurried back. If not, at least he would have seen to it that someone, one of his help here, was on hand to ask us ashore. Well, it seems that he didn't. But would Mr. Morton go out in the jungle and leave his trading post to take care of itself, you think? Not at all, no. There has to be someone here always. Usually some responsible Indian servant. But you see for yourself. Yes, the place is deserted, all right. But here's Pedro now. Ah, uh, senor, tonight we have the very good sleep, eh? Uh, in the little real wood houses. Ah, uh, that is good. Oh, yes. No, it isn't, Pedro. It isn't so good at all. No? I doubt if we sleep in any wooden house this night. Pedro, what do you make of that? Look at the doors and windows of the big shack there. By George's, something she has gone haywire. The door she seems all broke down. And look, the much stuff she has scattered on the ground. And Morton himself seems out of the picture. Not a soul in sight. There was one Indian. We saw him when we hove in sight of the landing. But he dashed away into the bush. Mm-hmm. It is the Indian raid, maybe. Ah, huh, senor? Oh. Look, away over there, near the little wood house. Yeah. Is it not that Pedro, she sees something on the ground? It, it looked like the Indian, maybe. Mm, I think you're right, Pedro. Uh, Jean, reach those field glasses over to me. 
Right there near your feet. Hurry, please. Hey, Jimmy, hand these to Mr. Noyce. Here you are, Mr. Noyce. Get... Uh, yeah, thanks. And I will soon find out. A swell welcome this turned out to be. Seems if there's any Indian trouble in the neighborhood, that's the neighborhood we're bound to be in. Always at the wrong time. Mm, yes, I thought so. There has been a raid, all right. That place up there is a wreck. Just a mess. And those trade goods. Maybe those Indians here stole plenty more to those Indians. A short time ago. That raid was staged not more than a few hours ago. But, Mr. Noyce, if it has been a raid, what, what happened to Mr. Morton? That question will be answered when we get closer to the ruins. Do we have to go ashore, Mr. Noyce? Yes, Jean. This is now a part of our business. We whites, no matter what part of the world we're in, must never forget that we are white. You mean there's been a crime committed here? Yes, Jimmy, against a white man. And there's got to be punishment of some kind. That's secondary, Jimmy. A white man made his residence here. We have to find out what happened. Find that white man. That's the white man's law in the jungle. Swell, Mr. Noyce, that's swell. And we're white, and I'm all set to go. And that goes for me, too, Mr. Noyce. Well, I'm afraid I'll have to leave Jimmy and you behind this time. Si, senor. And Pedro, she's going ashore now, eh? Yeah, right, Pedro. And I'm going with you. Jim and Jean, you'll transfer to the other canoe and go back across the river. Yes, sir. Say, look. Look at this, will you? An arrow sticking right in the side of the dugout. Yes, and it was shot from the far side of the river. Well, that puts us in a fine mess. Apparently, the far side of the river is even more dangerous at the moment. Pedro, si. get your rifle handy. The same goes for Eugene. All right, You sir. too, Jimmy. We're going to land at the little dock. <coughs> Senor, I will swing in on the far side. Eh? Mm -hmm. The river, she is in low water now. We can put the two canoes under the dock. I think that maybe they will be safe for them. Mm-hmm. You know, Pedro, I'm half tempted to swing back down river a little ways. I wonder if perhaps that isn't the reasonable thing to do. Ah, but that Indian arrow, she's come from across river. Yeah. The Indians, they are on both sides. Pedro, she thinks the safest place is in the one of the little wooden houses there, no? Yeah, maybe you're right, Pedro. All right. Now, the guns. Each of you carry at least an extra box of ammunition. Start gathering it now. Uh, Jimmy, you get shells for the rifles. Yes, sir. Gene, you get the shells for the automatics. All right, sir. All right, now. There you are. Look, Mr. Noyce, will this be enough? Gosh, we got enough gun stuff to start a little war. Yes, it looks like it. I surely hope we won't have to resort to guns again. Uh, Pedro. Si, senor. We leave our crews right here. You better give Mando and Nicolau a rifle each and 50 rounds of ammunition. See. Si. We don't want the Indians on the far shore to sneak across and get our gear. Uh, so put Nicolau in charge. Si, senor. I will attend to it now. Nicolau. Ita imani, mokolaka, ikavya. Imani, molaka ipani. Epakodo. It is all set, senor. She just said that no Indians will ever get across here. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, what do we do now, eh, senor? We're making for that smaller shack, the one to the left. We can keep close to the far edge of the clearing, and you and Jimmy and Jean keep both eyes in the jungle. Watch for ambush there. I'll cover the clearing. See. Si. Gosh, it's quiet around here. Yeah, it's too quiet, Miss Jean. Altogether too quiet. There are Indians hiding nearby. Rest assured of that. What makes you think so, Mr. Noyce? You can't see any, can you? No. So far, we've seen but one Indian. The one that dashed away into the jungle. He was on the far side of the clearing from here. But notice the usual bird and monkey sounds in the trees. Notice them? But there aren't any to notice. Yeah, that's what I mean. The birds and the monkeys are silent even away back there beyond the trading post. That means we are not the only humans here. Mr. Noyce, maybe I'm just speaking out of turn, but why don't we go over to the middle of the big clearing here? Sort of walk up the middle of it. Wouldn't that be safer? At least the Indians couldn't jump out at us. Uh, walking up the middle, well, it was just better than double the danger. These Indians, with their bows and arrows and blowguns with poison darts, they'd get us in no time. You mean then, by keeping closer to the jungle edge, we're safer? Yes, much safer. If we were out in the middle, Indians on either side here could creep out to the edge and get us before we went far. And we'd never even see who was shooting. But can't they shoot us right here from this side of the jungle? Oh, gosh, we're creeping right along the very edge. And the place is just a big tangle. Anything could be hiding in there. To shoot an arrow or puff a blowgun dart, open space is best. One can't shoot very straight through such a tangle of brush as this is. I get it. I get it now. 
Gosh, we're learning more about jungle lore every day we're with you. <laughs> Believe me, if it hadn't been left to Jean and me, we'd have been chosen to walk up the very middle of the clearing, the most dangerous place. Well, we'll know better next time. Senor, yes. look, something she move up in the big clump of bush there. Mm -hmm. I see something move. All right, Pedro, you know what to do to find out. Shoot higher, though. Don't shoot into the bush. The sound of the gun will be more than enough. See, si. wait then. We will see. Uh -huh. I will shoot it up above the bush. Uh -huh. Here she goes. Here they go. <laughs> She was something all right, yeah. and she was M's uh -huh. and she was here like everything, too. <laughs> yeah, only one Indian, though. Well, that's something. As long as they don't gang up on us, it isn't so bad. All right, now, look, we'll cut across from here, and just as soon as we reach that clump that the Indian vacated just now... Oh, senor, yeah? please, Pedro, she should go over there all by himself alone, with no one with him. Mm -hmm. If the coast she is all clear, then Pedro, she will give the signal. Okay, Pedro. Jimmy and Jane and me, we'll stay right here and keep watch. If it's safe over at the little hut, we'll make a run for it. Then Pedro, she will go now. Huh. Watch for the signal. All right. Mr. Noyce, is Pedro always wanting to run into danger like that? If you mean trying to safeguard me, yes. A long time ago, I quit trying to stop him. Why, if I don't let him go on ahead, his feelings get hurt. He resents it. But watch now. He's inside the little shack now. If everything is okay, he'll... Huh. Yeah, there he is. Yeah. Yes, it's all clear. All set, you two, now. A good tight grip on your guns now. And let's go. Come on. Give me your hand, Jean. Gosh, Mr. Noyce, the longer I practice running from Indians, the better I get. Well, same here, Jimmy. But he's <laughs> beginning to get my nanny. Now, don't slow down. Head right in the doorway. Right inside now, quick. Yes, yeah. Boy, there we made it. But what's all the row out there? A hailstorm or something? Yeah, we must get in here in time. That's hailstorm. That's arrows, you know. Oh, gosh. We pretty nearly got it in the neck that time. Say, but it feels good to be in a real wooden house. Feels kind of safe at that. Here's a little doorway. It must lead into the next room. Maybe a closet or a storeroom or something. Say, it's locked all right. Well, we can't... Wait. Oh, Mr. Noyce, come here quick. Over to this little door. Right here. Shh. Listen. I just heard something, a strange sound. Yeah. Listen. Pop, someone's in there. That was a human being moaning. Why, maybe that's... Oh, what did we do, Mr. Noyce? You hear that? Say, what do you know about that? Behind the little locked doorway, somebody moaning. Somebody in pain. And outside, Indian arrows rattling off the wooden walls and the corrugated tin roof. What's behind that door? What does Mr. Noyce, Jimmy, and Jean find when they get inside that room? Does Butch Grogan have anything to do with this? There's one way of finding out. Tune in next time.